what if I told you smaller CPUs are better? This might come as a shock to some of you. You may be thinking that with a larger CPU, more cores can be packed into it and more of basically everything. And it would definitely lead to increased performance. But you are wrong. This is mainly about the fabrication process of these chips. This process is done by semiconductor manufacturers. But first, what are semiconductors? Semiconductors are substances with properties between conductors, which conduct electricity, and insulators, which do not. In CPUs, multiple transistors are used. Transistors are semiconductor devices used to amplify electronic signals. This means that the more transistors, the better. Both transistors and semiconductors are mostly made from pure silicon. According to Moore's law, the number of transistors double each year, while the cost is halved. Smaller transistors mean that more transistors can fit into the CPU. This in turn makes the CPU smaller. More transistors in a smaller CPU increases the transistor density. The transistor density means the number of transistors per square nanometer. For example, the Apple A14 has 11.8 billion transistors in it, compared to the A13's 7 billion. More transistors in a smaller CPU, such as the Apple A14, increases the transistor density, and thus there is an increase in performance every time a new innovation is made in making smaller CPUs. In the mid-90s and early 2000s, transistors shrunk in size by half every two years. This led to massive improvements regularly. However, now Intel did not shrink the transistors and was stuck on the 14 nanometer process since 2014. Only recently, in 2019, did they finally move to 10 nanometer with their 10th gen CPUs while everyone else was at 7 nanometers, such as AMD. Another advantage of smaller transistors is the power efficiency. As I said earlier, the cost is decreased and performance is increased. It's a win-win situation. This is exactly why every time there's a huge leap in performance, there is definitely a decrease in the size of the CPU. The combination of the increase in performance and power efficiency and the decrease in cost is the reason why Apple's A14 Bionic chipset, the first ever in the world to be manufactured with a 5 nanometer fabrication process, is why they are able to achieve a 50% faster CPU and GPU. This is whilst keeping the 699 starting price point, which was carried over from the iPhone 11 series. This is also while maintaining equivalent battery life despite the adding of 5G which sucks a lot of power. At the time of writing, there are only two 5 nanometer chips on the market. The Apple A14 Bionic which is used in the iPhone 12 series and the 2020 iPad Air and the Kirin 9000 which is used in the new Huawei Mate 40 series. As of now, the benchmarks for the Kirin 9000 haven't been released yet, but the A14 benchmarks have. The A14 beats its predecessor, the A13, by a huge mile according to multiple benchmarks. And another notable advantage of a smaller footprint is that there will be lesser faulty chips. The fabrication of CPUs is a very complicated process, and some CPUs are discarded at the factory as they might have become unusable with cracks or holes in them which will affect the usability of them or most importantly the performance. A smaller footprint means that there is a lesser chance for a CPU to break while manufacturing. It also allows for more CPUs to be manufactured with a single silicon wafer. 
Therefore, manufacturers will prefer smaller CPUs, as their margins will not be hurt as much. And forget about hurt, their margins will be increased. But this also helps the end customer, as the prices will not become unaffordable and actually might become cheaper. Therefore, a smaller CPU is better in many ways. I hope I've summed everything up in this video. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed watching, please leave a like and subscribe. With that being said, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.